Well, hello and welcome to Cultural Streets Training. I, I'm talking all about knowing, owning, and being an influencer on a cultural street. And uh, and I, I'm talking today about actually how to do that. How do you make a difference that counts? Because really, you want to make a difference that counts. I, I do too, because uh, life is so much more than just going to work or going to school and hanging out or going to church. <laughs> no, life is about making a difference. I don't want to live in a shallow way. So that's what Cultural Streets is all about. This is some foundational training for discipleship and kingdom impact. I, I, I want to equip you to uh, shape culture by simply making Jesus known. And, and this isn't just some little idea of mine. No, this is a mandate from God. Every believer has a mandate from God to make a difference in his world because wherever we go, we carry the Holy Spirit. We carry God in us. And wherever God is, which is wherever believers are, and wherever we're allowing God to work through us, then things change, people change. And ultimately, that's what this is about. Uh, so I, I want you to begin to see your vocation, your interests, and your passion, and all of these things, your, your work and your home, as a place where you are on mission. For the longest time, people have felt that the place where they're on mission is at the church building. <laughs> well, that's not it. That's not. Uh, because your cultural street is where your passion and your interest, your work, your vocation, or that that's the place where you're on mission. And you're an ambassador of God there. That's where you carry God. So in a sense, you're a missionary there. So that's why we study hard, we work hard, we excel, grow your businesses, uh, maximize your opportunities, and live a life of excellence. And, and as you do this, you continue to increase your sphere of relational influence because you exist for a greater purpose than to simply make money, earn money, make a living. So we're going to dive into this today. I want us to look at two places in the Bible, Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, and Isaiah 58, verse 12. Isaiah, uh, Matthew 28, 19, Isaiah 58, 12. Look at those in your Bible, because you should really have those marked in your Bible, and, and uh, you should do that today. The second thing I want to encourage you to do, if you've not yet gone to the Cultural Streets website, go to this website of ours, culturalstreets.com and register and take the Cultural Streets test. I'd love to see your, your results, and you'd love to find out your results as well and, and determine which Cultural Street is the one that God has placed you on so that you, you can begin learn, learning more about how to specifically do this. Plus, there are a lot of other tools there on our website that will help you there. Well, when Jesus Christ left the earth, okay, this is after his crucifixion and resurrection, he was talking to about 500 people, and this was on the Mount of Olives just outside of Jerusalem. And this was people of all ages, and, and men and women were there. And he said something amazing, and it's found in Matthew 28, 19. I want you to look at this, 28, 19 and 20. He said this to everybody there. 500 people, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Now, that passage of scripture is actually the foundation for everything that we do with cultural streets. But, but what I want you to understand is he didn't just say that to some pastors and missionaries. Now, the truth is, a few of those people who were there, really just a few of them, did become pastors and missionaries, but it was only a handful. Most of the 500 people that were there were normal people with normal jobs who, in, who had just encountered the life and the love and the power of Jesus, and they were, the follow, they were the first real followers of Jesus Christ after the resurrection. And Jesus did not tell them to quit their jobs and go work at the church. He didn't. Actually, most of them kept doing their jobs and they kept interacting with their relational networks. They continued to enjoy their hobbies. They continued to do the things they always did. But now, Jesus had given them a new purpose. So God was using them on a new level because when they had accepted Christ into their lives and the Holy Spirit came into their lives, then, then all of a sudden they're carrying God into all these places. Now, I want you to look at yourself because you are anointed by God 
to do this same thing right where you are right now. It's no accident you work where you are, you let you live where you are. It's no accident that you have the hobbies that you have and that you interact with certain people in the community. It's no accident that you're a parent. It's no accident you're a student or a business leader. It's no accident that you're a performer or a lawyer or a teacher or an office staff member because God has anointed you, you, you to change the world and you simply do it one person at a time. You do it day in and day out on your cultural street. Now, I want you to look at the second passage. This is in Isaiah chapter 58, verse 12. And, uh, and the reason I want you to look at this is because this one verse of Scripture, you're going to see that God has actually commissioned you to be a repairer, a restorer, and a rebuilder. I'll say it again. God has commissioned you to be a repairer, a restorer, and a rebuilder. That's what your commission is also from God. So Isaiah 58 verse 12 says this, your people will rebuild the ancient ruins and will raise up the age old foundations. You will be called repairer of broken walls, restorer of streets with dwellings. So and I'm especially drawn to those words, restorer of streets with dwellings. See, there is a cultural street that you are called and commissioned and empowered by God to restore. And we've covered these uh, seven cultural streets in the past. Again, you can go to our website, culturalstreets.org, and you can take a look at that and, and discover the different cultural streets that are there. But there is a cultural street that you're called to. I mean, you're commissioned by God. You're supposed to be there. And God has put his power in you to make a difference on that cultural street. Now, let me break it down just a little bit. One question that comes up from time to time is, well, then, just tell me, what is culture? Well, simply stated, culture is how we just simply uniquely behave and cluster. We all behave, everyone behaves in unique ways. We cluster in unique ways. And there are all kinds of, there are macro cultures and micro cultures. And, you know, there's a kind of a, like nationally, let's just say there's a kind of a United States of America culture. But there's also cultures found in various cities and communities. I live in Fort Worth. And so uh, here in Fort Worth, there's a unique culture. But right over in the road, down the road, there's a city called Dallas. Dallas has a very unique culture. Don't call a person who lives in Fort Worth a person from Dallas because they'll say, no, that's a different culture. You don't call a person from Dallas a person from Fort Worth because they'll say, no, that, that's a different culture. And then even within the community, there are smaller cultures. And But we find cultures that also relate to different spheres of society. And those are the cultural streets that I'm talking about. So, so really, a culture, simply stated, is how we uniquely behave and cluster within a certain area of interest or within a certain culture. Because we behave certain ways. And we tend to cluster with people who behave the same as us. You know it. Uh, you want to be around people who do the things you do, like the things you like, and, and kind of think the way you think. Uh, so there, there's an arts culture. Uh, there's, a, there's a church culture. There's a business culture. And businesses have different cultures. There's a family culture. So uh, a question of, of cultural streets. What is a cultural street then? Well, a cultural street is where people regularly cross paths within that specific sphere of society. So a cultural street is where you interact with people within a certain culture, like literally on a street. And, uh, and you basically have something in common with that person and you brush up against that person and you keep crossing paths with that person. And, and those are the people that you're interfacing with on your cultural street. I like to call those people your neighbors. Uh, now, uh, that was a big question. That was, that's actually in the scripture uh, about who is my neighbor. Uh, well, I'll tell you who your neighbor is. And your neighbor is a person with whom you regularly cross paths. A good example of this is the parable of the Good Samaritan. I've already talked about it a little bit in this, uh, in this series of training, but it, it's kind of another one of those foundational passages of Scripture. It's found in Luke chapter 10, uh, verses 25 through 37. And if you go there, you can look and read the story of the Good Samaritan. And just a little bit of context here. Jesus was talking about how important it was to love your neighbor this one day. So this guy posed this question. He said, well, then... Who is my neighbor? 
Well, Jesus proceeded then to tell the story. It's a story of a Jewish man who is traveling on this ancient Middle Eastern road between these cities. And, and these roads were actually very dangerous places. People were often assaulted and robbed on their travels. And sure enough, this Jewish guy, he was beat up. He was stripped of his clothes. He was robbed. And he was left lying there on the side of the road. It was a sight to behold. And he was stuck there. He was sick. He, he couldn't get up. And, and the thing is, people literally passed by not paying any attention to him. But then... A certain man who was a Samaritan, now this is a man of a different ethnic and different religious background. That's important. Different ethnic background, different religious background, but he stopped and helped the man out. Basically, he rescued him out of his tragedy. And so Jesus went on to explain that the Samaritan was a good neighbor to the Jewish man. Now, again, well, why were they neighbors? Well, they were neighbors because they were on the same street. They brushed up against one another. Their lives intersected. And then the Samaritan, regardless of his ethnicity or his religious ideas, he did ministry to bring repair and restoration and healing to the man he crossed paths with. And, and then he stuck with the man until he was fully healed. It's an amazing story. But it's a template of how we should do our lives. Because, because cultural streets, it's about ministering to people with whom you brush up against in your day-to-day -day life. And then you release uh, healing and love and care and discipleship until they are healed. And then they're able to do that for someone else. Now, this primarily happens outside of the church building. And it happens best in various societal spheres or on these different cultural streets. And see, that is where you're actually called to do the ministry of Jesus. That is where God has anointed you to restore, repair, and heal lives, just like I read in that scripture a moment ago. Now, Matthew 28, 19, I want to read this to you again. It's really important. Jesus said, go and make disciples of all nations. Baptize, and that all nations literally means all people groups. That means all different types of people. So it doesn't literally mean Afghanistan and South Africa and Japan. I mean, it could, but really that term mean, means all people groups, like all nationalities. And, the, and, and so it doesn't really matter what background a person has. You're to go and make disciples of them, and then you baptize them, baptizing, that's important, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching, that's another part of this, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. In other words, obey the things that Jesus taught. That's actually what we do on our cultural streets. So it's called discipleship. Discipleship. And discipleship is commitment to the spiritual growth and welfare of another person. Okay, I'll say that again. Discipleship is a commitment to the spiritual growth and welfare of another person. And you do this before conversion and after conversion. Uh, a lot of times we think of, well, we just need to get people to pray a prayer and get them saved. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's very important, but not just. Because discipleship begins even before a person is born again. And then they're, they can, they, they're converted, they're born again, but then discipleship continues afterwards. So discipleship is the bigger issue here. And we do it, I, I have four, four methods or four things that we should do with discipleship. And the first one is model your walk with Jesus. Just simply model it. Let, let the other person see how you walk and live with Jesus. And that's, that's being real and transparent. And let them see your life. Let them integrate with your life. Uh, and the second method of discipleship is give the person um, personal attention. That means you're going to help them with their unique needs. You're going to walk with them personally through the ups and downs of their life, their successes and their failures. Point them to Jesus. And the, the third thing that you should do is to share biblical truth with them, not just try to 
teach them or lecture to them, but you share biblical truth with them. So as you are growing in your faith, then you take that and you help others to grow with their faith. That is discipling others. Uh, one of the fantastic methods that we have of this is very simple. It's, it's, it's you simply go to church and when you're in church, you're, you're, uh, you have your Bible open and you're taking notes and you're taking this information and maybe the other person that you're discipling is hearing that same message as well. Well, you take that then and you go deeper in it and you talk about it with another person. It's very simple. You're sharing biblical truth. Now, in the case of, of my local church, I may be preaching the truth, but, but God has called you to then to take that and to share that with others in the unique way way that you would do that with the people that you're discipling. That's the third part. And the fourth part is to actually baptize them. I, I believe that if you're discipling someone, you should have the privilege of baptizing them. In fact, we practice that at our church. If if you're discipling someone and you've maybe you've led them to Christ, you're helping them grow in Christ, then you should just baptize them and we'll, we'll celebrate with you in that. So when you're doing these things, you're discipling a person. You're you're influencing them. See, that's where influence, influence and discipleship are two very closely related terms. And then when people change, the culture changes. Okay, C catch that? When people change, the culture changes. Now, that, that's very powerful because let's say you're in the arts and entertainment cultural street. Well, when you are discipling people in the arts and entertainment cultural street, when those people change, then the culture of what's being put out through arts and entertainment begins to change because the people change. So what happens is then that person will, that you're discipling, opens up doors for opportunities then to influence more and more and more people. But don't forget this. There are people on every cultural street, every single one of them. Every street has a culture. Every culture has influencers. So I encourage you to influence your neighbors. Who's your neighbor? Simply a person that you brush, brush up against, walk on the same path with. And, then, and what's that path? That path is your cultural street. So I have three action items here for you. Three. First of all, make sure you discover your cultural street. A simple way to do that is to do that by going to the Cultural Streets website. Second is to make the commitment that you are going to influence and shape culture. And then third, the way you do that is to begin discipling. And I gave you those four principles of discipleship that you should follow through with. Remember, discipleship is a commitment to the spiritual growth and welfare of a person, both before and after conversion. So you model your walk with Jesus. You give them personal attention. You share biblical truth and you baptize them. And that just keeps going and it keeps going. Uh, it's, it's a beautiful process that God gave to us. And that's how we make Jesus known. And you can do it on your cultural street. Well, I want to pray for you, and I want to pray blessing on you that, that as you begin to disciple another person, that God's light and his life and his glory is going to shine through you. You don't have to worry about messing up because you probably will, but we all do. But that's the beauty of it, is, is that, is that it's, a, it's a work of art that God's doing through you. And you don't have to worry about doing it perfectly. You just need to make sure you're obeying and following Christ. So uh, let's pray. God, I thank you so much for the opportunity we have to grow in our cultural streets. And I pray that you'll help us to not just learn about our cultural streets and to think about it, but we will begin looking for others on our cultural streets that we will disciple, whether, they're, whether they are uh, have experienced salvation yet or not, and that we will follow through with that process as given to us through the scriptures, that we will be people who will restore and bring, bring that restoration and bring that new life and that encouragement to others around us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, God bless you. And again, if you haven't yet gone to the Cultural Streets website, do that, culturalstreets.com or .org. We have both of those. Register and discover your cultural street and learn a little bit more about it. All right. God bless you and I look forward to sharing with you a little bit more about this as we continue to grow in our cultural streets.